Hi, this is Simon from Tokyo Productions and welcome to another tutorial for Motion 5. And today we're going to be looking at creating this nebula scene, which is in fact a lot simpler than it looks. What we're going to try to do with this complex scene is keep everything as simple as possible so you have the maximum performance benefits and you can really go to town on compositing it and making it look the way you want it to. So let's dive in and get started. I've got a new project here. As usual, it's 1920-1080, the frame rate is 24 frames a second, and I've got a duration of 10 seconds. So the first thing we're going to do in this project, I'm going to hit F6 to turn off the timeline view, which I'd never like to have up if I don't need it, is we're going to make a star field. So the first step to making a star field is to make a star. So we're going to hit C for the circle tool. We'll hit F7 for the HUD. We'll choose a fill color of white and then we'll hold down the shift key and draw about as small a circle as you can draw something like that and we'll come over to the inspector here properties and we'll reset its position and we'll close down the hud now it's not always easy to spot all the details that one misses when doing these tutorials and I've missed a key detail here, which is to feather the circle. So if you go into the shape properties and apply a little feather so you get a nice soft circle, it's going to look a whole lot better than what I've done here. Then we'll hit E to make an emitter. So E. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the end of the timeline like so. So I get the end result of the animation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be making static elements that I'm then going to composite into a star field that has three dimensional qualities. So let's begin by coming over to the emitter controls and selecting rectangle. Then we'll set the arrangement to random fill. We'll twirl open the size here, set the width to 1920 and the height to 1080. So now we've got a spread of stars across our canvas. And let's turn up the birth rate. Let's try about 80 or something. So we have a nice lot of stars. I'm going to come all the way down to the scale here and enter a value of 50, just so we start with smaller stars. But I'm going to come to the scale randomness, which is the next field down, and I'm also going to type 50. And that gives us a much more natural looking spread of sizes. Now, obviously, we don't want all our stars to be white. We want a bit of color variation in it. So I'm going to come down here to where it says color mode, and I'm going to select pick from color range. And that now gives me this gradient here. Let me twirl it open, color range. So what's now happening is that the emitter is selecting one or other of these two colors pretty much at random. What we want to do though is introduce some more colors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this bottom bar here and I'm going to make an extra tab. So click there, I'm going to click on the color swatch and let's make this green. Let's click another tab. Let's make this, bring it somewhere over here. This one here, let's make something like that. So now we've got a nice spread of colors. What I've done is I've slightly exaggerated the colors. So we've got plenty of color information to play with. At the end of the day, I'm going to be bringing this into my final composite and grading down those colors, but at least I've got a good starting point. So that's my first star field element. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the share menu and save current frame. And I'm going to select PNG image or ping as people like to call it and I can hit next and I'm going to save this out as starfield A. In fact I'm going to call it starfield AA because I've already got an element there. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down to the bottom here and I'm going to hit random seed and that has instantly created a completely different set of stars. So again I'm going to export that to share save current frame and let's export it as Starfield BB. So between those two elements, I think I'll have enough 
basic material for my background star field. But what I want to do is create some slightly more interesting larger stars. And to do that, I'm going to come to the library, Command 2. Let's look for generators and I'm going to drag in star rather appropriately. Let's drag that into a new group at the top here. We can hit F4 to come to the star properties here and make a couple of changes. I'm going to set the radius to 10. I'll set the spike scale to 100 and the spike width I'll set to 1 and the epsilon I'll set to minus 0.2. So what we've got is a very small spiky star-like object. I could also reset the colour here to white and that'll give me a nice bright object to play with. Then what we can do is we can take this star and we can just drag it into the emitter cell here where it originally said circle. And now we've got loads of those crazy stars instead. Let's turn off that group with the star in it and let's come back to the emitter here and make a few changes. Obviously we don't need nearly as many of these objects so let's turn the birth rate right down to three. What I might just do to give them a bit more punch is just to simply clone this emitter layer. So I'm going to hit K. So what I'm going to do is take that clone and set its blend mode to linear dodge. And that's really, if I turn that on and off, you can see how that's really punched up those cores, those centers of those stars. Let's come to the emitter properties and I'm just going to scale it down a bit because I don't want those stars to hit the edges of my frame. Just bring, bring that width in and the height down till we've got made sure that those stars are sitting well within the border of the canvas. Okay, I like the look of that. What I'm going to do is again come to the share menu, save current frame, leave it at PNG, next, and I'm going to call it Starfield Stars. Overwrite the one I've already made. And then let's duplicate this group Command D, hide the original. So I'm going to make another component to go into this emitter. And in this case, let's come back to this group here at the top. Uh, let's call that elements, just so you can see what I'm doing. We'll turn off the star, turn on that group, come to the library command two, and I'm going to look for lens flare. And I'll drag it into that elements group. I'll call that emitter again so you can see. I'm, I'm rushing through this just because you don't want to watch me do labeling and all that kind of stuff. That's not what this tutorial is about. Let's come to the lens fair properties, that's F4. And let's start changing this up a bit as well. Let's set a size of two, so it's really nice and small. I'm gonna turn off the overlay, so that's command forward slash, just so you can see. Otherwise that center of that star is being obscured. In fact, I'm going to just move that over so you can see better what I'm doing. So I've got a size of two. Let's turn the intensity up to four and let's set the fall off to 10. So that just tightens it up a bit. We can set the streak intensity up to one because this is really all about those streaky bits. The streak count, I'm going to turn down to four. Streak noise frequency, I'm going to turn down to one streak noise level, I'm going to turn down to zero. So I've got that now set up as a lens flare. Let's come over to the emitter again. Zoom out to see the full frame so you can see what I'm doing. Let's turn on this emitter and I'm going to take this lens flare element and drag it into that circle copy cell there. So now that's replacing those by the lens flares. If we come back to the emitter itself, we don't want these to be angled at 45 degrees, which is the default behavior for the lens flare. So I can come down to angle here, and if I type 45 degrees, that'll straighten them up, and that's a better result. 
Now the problem about the built-in lens flare in motion is that it's composited on black. And I don't know whether you can see, I've got some slightly odd artifacts here. And that's because some of these elements are obscuring each other within the emitter. I can solve that problem by coming down here under the emitter controls and hitting additive blend. And now you'll see that problem has gone away because those are being added together. Again, let's come down to the bottom here and click random seed just to make this completely different to our last version. So hit generate. Let's come to the elements group and turn that off. So we hide that source lens flare. And now we've got this really quite nice looking effect, which is again different from stars. It's softer, it's more, it's more photographic looking. Again, I think we've probably got slightly too many of these. So I'm going to turn the birth rate down to two. And then let's select both the emitter and that clone layer. Remember that clone layer is doing that nice brightening up effect. Let's select them both. So hit, select one, hit command, select the other. And then we can just move them together again, just so we clear the edges of the frame. What I might just do is come to the emitter itself. Maybe let's open out the width because we could probably use a bit more of that width this time. There we go. Something like that. All this is really just down to you and what you like the look of. OK, so this is our final star field element. So we'll again come back to the share menu, save current frame, still keep it at PNG or ping, star field, flare, and we'll save that. OK, so that's our Starfield Builder project, and I'm going to save that as Starfield Builder, just in case we ever wanted to come back to that. So I'm going to save that. And now I'm going to make a new project. So Command N or File New. And again, we'll hit select 1080, 24 frames a second, 10 seconds, just the same as before, and open that up and hit F6 to hide that timeline. Then what we'll do is come to the file browser and pick up those elements that we made. So if you remember, we made together, we made Starfield AA, Starfield BB, Stars and Flare. So I'm going to select all of those and I'm going to drag them into the project. Now you probably remember my telling you about that motion lens flare element and how it's composited on black. And you can see that despite the fact that we managed to composite it correctly, we still got that black and it's obscuring everything else. So I just need to come over to the inspector F1 for that layer. And I'm going to set that blend mode, I think, to add. And now we can see through it to the layers beneath. OK, so let's move some of these elements back in Z space to give us some parallax. Let's take Starfield A, come to its transform. Let's twirl open the position. I'm going to set the Z position here to minus 10,000. So it's a long way back. And I'm just going to scale it back up again till it more or less hits the edge of the frame. And I'm going to do the same with the next one. Except this time, I'm going to go to minus 7,500, so it's not quite so far away. Again, let's just scale it up till it's starting to get closer to the edges of the frame. Starfield stars, again, we can do the same thing. Let's move it back probably to about minus 5,000, this one. And scale it up just as we'd like. I'm not going to go all the way here. That's probably quite nice. Same again with Starfield Flare. Let's make this one minus 2,500. And again, just scale that up. You can also, of course, move that over. We could move the stars over as well until we get something a little bit more interesting looking. And now we can also just build up some complexity by duplicating some of these layers. So I'm going to take Starfield BB, duplicate it, F1 for its properties here, twirl open the rotation, and I'm going to rotate it through 180 on Y. So I've got it going the other way. 
just got a nice bit of variation and what we want is not to have too uniform looking a result just so we keep the element of variation I might duplicate Starfield A again F1 let's rotate it through 180 on Z let's move it up maybe to there across so what I've tried to do is I've tried to focus a few more of the stars over up into the top right hand corner and I'm going to select that group and I just want to add a filter to calm down some of this color so command 2 for the library filters color correction hue saturation drag it onto that group F3 for the inspector let's just calm it down by bringing down that saturation just a bit. So there we go. Now I want to add a camera so we can see how this is all working. So that's Alt Command C. Switch to 3D. Then if we hit Command 2, come to the library behaviors and basic motion, add a throw behavior to the camera. F2 for that the, the throw controls. Twirl that open. Let's just enter a Z value of minus 50 and then let's press play and see how that works and that's quite nice if I exaggerate that movement that's probably the movement we're going to end up with but let me exaggerate it now just so you can see we've got quite a bit of parallax there now if I go to the first frame and press play you'll probably see there's a jump there so why is that jump happening? Well, that's down to the fact that the camera, if I switch to its the camera tab here, has got a far plane of 10,000 pixels. And you probably remember that our furthest layer is actually at 10,000. So what we need to do is set that far plane to be much further back, so that will accommodate that furthest layer. So I'm going to set that to be 15,000 pixels. And now you'll see that that's all there from the beginning. So when I was planning this tutorial I was thinking that probably I could show you the process of making the star field in about five minutes but it's turned out to be more than three times as long as that. hope it's been worth it just to see a bit more of the process. What I'm going to do now is layer this up a lot more. You've seen me do that so you don't need to watch the whole process just to make this a little bit more complex and then we'll come back and rejoin it a little bit later. Okay so here's a RAM preview of where I've got to. I've layered up about 25 layers of those stars to build up some fairly considerable density and the benefit of this route as against using live emitters is not just you can get much better real-time performance, I can, I can actually get real-time playback off this, but also that you can distribute the elements exactly as you want them in a much more organic way. So I can concentrate stars and elements in particular areas and it really helps to bring the scene together a bit more. So next what we're going to do is to build the nebula components and to do that we're going to make another new project. So that's command N and we'll say yes to this 1080 project. Open that up and I'll hit command J to come to the project properties and what I actually want is to set the height to 1920. So we've got a square 1920 by 1920 project. And then what I'm going to do is come to the library command 2, look for my generators and clouds and I'll bring that into the project. So now I'm going to hit F4 to come to the cloud parameters here. I want to make a couple of changes. First of all is to reduce the speed down to 0.2 and then I don't know whether you notice but there's something about the generator, clouds generator, where there's this focal point in the middle. It all seems to be bending in towards the middle and I don't like that. So I can fix that by coming down here to the offset, the Y offset, and if I just drag that I can get that nasty focal point to disappear off the top of the screen. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is to cut out 
the clouds so I'm not using the square I'm using a much more organic shape so in order to do that I'm going to hit alt B and that will bring up the Bezier mask tool or you could come down here and select it so then I'm going to draw around looking for places where the cloud has gaps that I can slice through it's not an exact science really it's just a question of finding what you think works well join it up then come to the mask properties here and we'll just apply a small feather we don't want a huge feather maybe something like minus 40 will do what I might also do is just evolve that mat so possibly it follows along a bit better through the course of the clouds animation so if I come to the end of the timeline and hit a to turn on the animation hit command forward slash to turn on the overlays just wherever the edges seem to meet a very bright spot I'm going to drag them out till we get to a softer spot not like that maybe come over here you can probably see what I'm doing smooth some of them off maybe just find the seams as it were it doesn't have to be too accurate because we're going to be doing another trick any second now so I'm going to turn off keyframing just in case something strange happens later on so A to turn it off again so my next step is going to be to select the clouds layer command 2 for the library filters color correction levels and I'm going to apply that to the clouds F3 for the inspector I'm going to grab this gamma value here and drag it right and that makes a better job of the edges and when I'm happy with that I'm going to select the clouds layer F1 to come to its blending here I'm going to set the blend mode to screen and I'll also set the opacity down to 30 I might also come back to the Bezier mask mask controls here and s increase the feather quite a lot I think I might go for minus 200 just so we've got some softer edges and then I'm going to take that clouds layer and I'm going to make a clone by hitting K I'm going to turn on the overlays command forward slash and then give myself a bit of space here I'm going to hold down the shift and option key and just drag to scale it down uniformly and then I'm going to move it around rotating that handle move it around so that I'm starting to build up a more complex edge let's hold down the alt key and drag it to another position I'll drag it to there maybe just a little bit of rotation so it sits in better again hold down the shift key just to drag it out uniformly so it's a little bit larger hold down the alt key again drag it out to a new position like this works quite well in there maybe again scale that up just a little bit don't want them all too small and more or less where we are with the original but it's just adding that extra complexity in there that we can't get with the clouds generator on its own so I think that's fairly good I might just add one more command D turn on the overlays just drag it out larger still like that perhaps just make it feel a bit little bit more cloudy overall a little bit of additional rotation Actually, I don't think that's too bad so now you see as against where we were if I alt click my base clouds layer to view it we had that which was a little bit dull and uncomplicated now we've got a lot more fine detail in there and that's looking way better so what we need to do at this point is to come to the share menu export movie let's select proxy to keep the file size nice and small uh, because it's going to be perfectly good for 
the our purposes here let's make sure we have video only and I'm going to render it out to my tutorial elements folder and I'm going to call it cloud a and we'll render that so the next step assuming you've rendered that out is to make some more instances or variations rather on this cloud idea Ideally, I think you need about five to get enough variation, but you could probably make do with three. See, the more different kind of detail you're going to have, the better our final scene is going to look. Let me just show you the steps that are required to make a new version of this. Let's duplicate cloud A. Let's hide cloud A. Let's lock it and call this new group cloud B. I'm going to open up cloud B. I'm going to delete those clones because they're all going to be in a different position this time around. And we also, I'm afraid, need to delete that Bezier mask. And then we'll come into the clouds generator and we need to apply an offset so we're getting a different bit of clouds. So I would say something like 960 will get us a genuinely different bit of cloud. Again, we need to select the Bezier Mask tool, that's Alt-B, or select it from down here. And let's draw out a new cloud shape. Now, it's a good idea to make them not all square, so we can have longer ones, fatter ones. So something like that will do. And again, let's set the feather to minus 200. Let's come to the end of the project and turn on keyframing and again let's just drag some of these points around so we're getting an evolving shape. As you probably gathered last time around this is a slightly bogus process because really we're not tracking the movement of those clouds as such we're just creating a mask that looks like it evolves and will give us a bit more plausibility. So that should do for our second cloud there. Again, we want to turn off keyframing. So that's A to turn it off. We'll select that clouds. We'll make a clone by hitting K. And then we'll turn on our overlays, command forward slash. Holding down the shift key, we'll shrink down the section and move it over to there. That looks quite good, just, just as it is. Hold down the alt key, move it to a different position rotate it so it doesn't look like it's the same bit and hold down the alt key uh, rotate it again possibly shrink this one down a bit and so on so once again you'll come to the share menu export movie and you'll render it out this time as cloud b and so on and you'll carry on until you've got three or hopefully five variants. So this is the end of part one. Thank you very much for sticking with it this far. In part two, we'll get onto the far more exciting part of compositing the final scene. So I hope to see you again then. Thanks very much for watching.